Hello, girlfriends, and welcome to another episode of Tried and Tested. Now, in the recent years, there have been more and more up-and-coming beauty brands from Singapore, and they're doing really interesting, unique things, so we thought we'd check them out. So here, we have a solid ginger shampoo and a solid broccoli conditioner from Oasis Hair. So their products are organic and they're made fresh here in Singapore a few times a week by their founder and beauty chef, Hildra. So she says beauty chef also because actually the place where all the magic happens, she refers to it as the beauty kitchen. So Oasis is a brand for those who are looking for a more natural way of living and they also promote sustainability and using less waste in their packaging. So for example, these you can also order them without packaging packaging at all. But we thought just, you know, show you what it could look like because they were also made lovely gifts. I insist Christmas is coming, but they keep saying Christmas not coming. It's almost Christmas. It's end of September already. October, November, December <laughs> Christmas. It's a good time to start planning. Great gifts. So these are the midi size and they're supposed to each last for about 30 to 50 washes. Here is how you would use them. First, you wet your hair and then you rub the shampoo directly onto your scalp and lather in and then you wash it off. So I've tried solid shampoos before and I did find it a bit hard to lather and sometimes I wasn't sure whether it was like clean or not. So I'm interested to see how these perform. Uh, okay, let's have a look inside. Mmm, smells so good. Spicy, like very strong spicy ginger. This looks like a cannoli. So they have other flavours like blue pea, lemongrass and turmeric and I chose the ginger one because it sounded like really nice and I love the smell of ginger. This is actually for hair loss. I don't really have hair loss, I don't think. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> I mean, more hair wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Okay, so this is a broccoli conditioner and inside they have shea butter, they have omega-9 and they also have vitamin C and B6 and it's supposed to be good to give your hair a shine and also to prevent frizz. It actually smells very minty and citrusy so apparently there's also like mint and grapefruit inside here. There's no broccoli smell. Okay, so I'm gonna take these home and try them and see how they go. So I have been trying out the shampoo and conditioner and I love it. The shampoo is a lot easier to use than I thought it would be because it just lathers so well. I wouldn't say super dense but it's a pretty dense cushiony foam that arises which is pretty amazing. Shape-wise this is easy to hold and you don't really lose your grip. Right? But I do think that as it gets smaller and as you use more, it might get a little bit more difficult. But I think in which case you just kind of melt it down and like put it through your hair. Which is what I had to do for the conditioner. I think there's just a lot more oils in it. So it's a lot softer and you just see how it's hard to use it. <laughs> it feels a little bit oily and a bit heavy and maybe weird at first. But after I washed it off, I was like, oh, it actually doesn't feel greasy at all. And there's no like residue on my scalp, it feels fresh and just, I mean, look at my hair, look, it's so bouncy! So in terms of storage, I do not like it when my bar soaps or like bar whatever, like solid wet things are on flat surfaces like this. So, <laughs> it's actually meant for your kitchen sponge, but I feel like the contact area here is much smaller, so it just my purposes. After you use it for a while, this starts to happen and that's a bit... I do not like that. <laughs> but it's okay, I just don't look at it and use it. So overall, really enjoyed it. I would give the shampoo a 10 out of 10. It did such a great job. Even when I didn't use the conditioner right, my hair was very bouncy and it felt very alive. For the conditioner, I would give it, well, maybe a 9 out of 10 just because it's much softer, so it's a bit fussy to use and I did find it hard to put it through my hair so yeah, like I had to squish it off, melt it down and put it through my hair. So I would give it a 9 out of 10 but actually, you know what? It still smelled great and it worked very well so... And I, I guess after a while, you kind of get used to it. Which I think for the shampoo, once it goes down to a smaller size, you'll probably have to do something like that as well. So okay, I will give it a 9.5 out of 10. So to be clear, I haven't done anything to my hair. I haven't styled it or anything. I just left it to air dry. And this is like how it looks now, so... So Rookie Beauty is a skincare brand that harnesses the power of superfoods to give you glowing, healthy skin. So this is their first and most popular product. This is the Green Pulp Paste Mask and it's a vegan gel mask that's supposed to hydrate and plump your skin. Inside they have carrots, tomatoes, matcha powder, kale, soybeans, vitamin E. This is a meal. So these are pimple patches also from Rookie. 
Okay, I found this because I was actually looking for cute pimple patches and then I found these heart-shaped ones! So cute! Aren't they adorable? I got this because I thought, oh, maybe it could be like a cute accessory also. Um, but then I put them on and I realised that because they're red and like quite big and the shape is not super clear, actually when you put it on from far, it just looks like a very big pimple. So it kind of like went against what I thought it would do. But these pimple patches work so well. And I wasn't expecting them to. I thought they would just be pretty and then that was it, right? But they work so well. So I'm super in love with these as well. All right. I'm excited to try this out. Mmm, that looks like candy. It looks like the frozen honey. <laughs> the texture is kind of like melted mochi. So how it works is that it's a green gel and you put it on your skin and then you massage. As you massage, it turns white. It feels like I'm putting food on my face actually. Oh, and I can feel it warming up on my skin. The warming sensation is not extreme, it's quite nice actually. But it's interesting. Like I'm finding this whole thing like really like Really a sensorial adventure. <laughs> but the thing is like just gooey, you know? So like even after I stop massaging it and once it turns white, it kind of actually still feels gooey. It feels like very thin slime. Yeah, because okay, look at the way it's hanging off my face. I will admit like I'm not a huge fan of this texture. It doesn't really smell like much. It kind of smells more like leaning towards the unscented skincare with a bit of a woody smell. Okay, so now after rubbing it on for one minute, I have to leave it on for 10 to 15 minutes. Alright, it's been about like 12 minutes now, so we're going to remove it. Interestingly, it feels exactly the same. You know how sometimes masks, after you leave it on, it'll either dry or it'll like harden or something, but this feels exactly the same. I'm very interested to see the results. Okay, after I removed everything, it doesn't still feel sticky. It feels good. Okay, the elasticity, it feels really nice. My skin feels bouncy and healthy and it feels hydrated. It feels calm, it feels there's a slightly, it's slightly cool. It doesn't feel like it's been agitated, so it's very gentle. Because sometimes the mask, after you take them off, it can feel a little bit like, oh no, everything's like still tingling. Yeah, so I quite like this. For the sticky thing, I think it'll take a bit of getting used to. I haven't tried a lot of masks that are like so sticky. Yeah, so that's in a way, I, I can see how that could be fun. So overall, I think I would give this an 8 out of 10. Mm. Yeah, I would give this an 8 out of 10. It didn't feel like my skin went through a huge change, but it does feel like nourished. So this collection is from Saha's Art Beauty. Now Saha's Art Beauty was started by Saha Salim. She is a 23-year-old beauty influencer, makeup artist, and she started posting makeup-related stuff on Instagram, I think about in 2015. And now she has like over 300,000 followers. And so this is a fine art-inspired makeup collection. And I think it's so interesting because it's like we have so many types of makeup and makeup collections out there. I do not recall seeing one that's been inspired by fine art before. And her products are also vegan, cruelty-free, and alcohol-free. Very cool. So this is the Mona Painter's palette. Now this was inspired by what she thought Leonardo da Vinci's oil paint palette would look like as he was painting the Mona Lisa. Wow! This feels really nice. This feels like a nicely made palette. Art is never finished, only abandoned. Ooh, it's so smooth. The browns are very buttery. Ooh, this gold is beautiful. I think the glitters are really quite special. Okay, let's try this out. Oh, such a beautiful color. Very hard to find like nice normal brown sometimes. I'm because I like because there's so many, I get quite picky with them. <laughs> and this is a really pretty one. Look at how smooth that is. I'll try some pink up on top. Oh, so cute. It feels like a bit sunsetty. <laughs> I feel like the colours in here, I kind of get like the whole like fine art thing. It's kind of inspiring me to play with more colours. Like sometimes that with palettes that have a lot of colours in there, it can feel a little bit like intimidating or it can feel a little bit like, oh, where do I start, you know? Whereas this one kind of has like a nice base of simple colours that work really beautifully and then they have like colours that you can slowly build up if you're feeling a bit more courageous. I'm really loving this palette. I think it blends so beautifully. Like the colours are gorgeous and everything just blends so nicely together. It performs really, really well. I just want to throw everything on my eye. <laughs> Alright, this is my final look. 
I also managed to use the Iowa to do the inner corner of my eye. The shimmers perform so well, the bright colours are bright, you can make them brighter if you want, you can also use them just as a touch. At the end, I ended up using a little bit of virgin to add a bit more like of a pop of pink. The shimmers are beautiful and actually even though this is more silver, like because it's got gold and like sort of green flecks in it, it actually matches with this gold really well as well if you wanted to like mix them together. So overall, I, I'm, I'm loving this palette. It just I would give this a 10 out of 10. Alright, we have two of the lipsticks here. So the whole collection is the Kiss Liquid Lipstick Collection and it's inspired by Gustav Klimt's most famous painting called The Kiss. So 1908 was the year The Kiss was finished and Belvedere is the museum in which The Kiss is housed. So this shade is a 1908 and it's the Glazed Creme. Oh, that's beautiful. That applies so well. It's very easy to get to the edges. It's a very creamy formula and it's got a nice shine and it's incredibly comfortable, my god! The sensation of putting it on is comfortable and after it's on, I don't really like feel it. It's just like there. And this colour is gorgeous! It just kind of reminds me of Brook Candy but like updated. And I prefer because it's like a nice like brownish nude, but it's got like lots of beautiful pink tones in there. Because sometimes browns are tricky because they can make your face look very dull. But then this brightens. Yeah, when I first saw the applicator, I was like, oh, I'm not sure because it kind of looked very thin and a bit bendy, and I wasn't sure if you'd be able to like control it well. But my god, it's like perfect. Oh my god, I'm so happy. I love this. Okay, this is like a ten out of ten for me. This is beautiful. Now let's try out the matte formula in Belvedere. This is their most popular matte shade. Actually, I was surprised by the way this colour turned out. I was expecting it to be a little bit more brown, but what I'm seeing is more red with a hint of terracotta. I think when she formulated this, she was taking Accutane, and so her lips were very dry, but I think she was saying that her favourite lipsticks are like matte. So she was trying to formulate something that she could still use even with the lips being very dry. So I think generally matte liquid lipsticks can be very drying. It's hard to find one that doesn't feel like a film that's just like stretched over your mouth. So I feel for this one, I don't really get a lot of that stretching filmy sensation, but is there a little bit? Generally, I usually go for like the creams or like the butters or like soft mattes. I rarely go for like matte matte. But I think for a matte matte, this is, I would, yeah, I would say that this is considered like not very drying. So that's really impressive. So I guess for me the little thing would just be that the three different colours like not quite matching. It's like kind of different in the tube and on the lips. If I were buying it online, I think I'd be a little bit disappointed. But it's still a pretty colour, so I think I'll just find a 7.5 for that. So 9.5. So this is the Charcoal Beads Gel Cleanser from Glowfully and it is formulated without harsh chemicals and also Glowfully products are supposed to be specially suited for our hot and humid environment. So inside here, we have charcoal that's supposed to act like a magnet and draw our pore clogging pollutants and impurities and the cleanser is also scented with geranium essential oil. Alright, let's try this out. I'm surprised. I thought they were going to be grey but these look a bit green to me or is it just my eyes? The smell is very strong, like a bit of a green like botanical kind of scent. For a gel cleanser, I do find this quite rich, but it actually feels quite moisturising. Cream cleansers sometimes can feel a little bit heavy, whereas this one kind of sits in the middle of a gel and a cream after I lather it, which I quite like because it feels super refreshing. Okay, so initially after I washed it off, like it felt nice and bouncy and like still hydrated. Not dry or stripped the way some gel cleansers are, but like the more it sits out, the more I feel like it's actually, it actually feels a little bit bare. It feels nice, but it does feel a little bit drier. Yeah, so maybe it's not suitable for my skin because I do lean towards the dry side. I mean, it's not stripped, it's still okay and my skin does feel very nice and it was refreshing but it's starting to feel a little bit more taut. Like, the more I leave it, the more taut it feels, if that makes sense. Yeah, but it doesn't feel like this. I found the smell a little bit overpowering at first. After a while, it was kind of okay, I can still 
sort of like smattered on my face now so I'm not a huge fan of that but overall I think this is yeah it's alright yeah it's quite a pleasant experience so I think I would give this like maybe a 7.5 out of 10 it feels quite nice just maybe not for my skin type yeah I guess like if your skin isn't like too dry I think this is okay Alright, we've come to the end of the episode! Now, if you want to find out more about the products, how much they cost, where to get them from, you can go to our Tried and Tested Facebook page, or you can check out the links in the description box down below. Or you can join our Telegram channel, and we'll get little updates there. And if you've already subscribed to our YouTube channel, thank you very much! Now, all you need to do is hit that bell, and you'll be notified every time a new video comes out to YouTube. Or you can just download the Click Network app. Alright, till next time, go be beautiful!